Glory to Jesus Christ. Today is Sunday, April 11th, the fourth the Sunday of the fast. And now, in modern times, we remember uh, St. John Climacus, the author of the Divine Ladder of Ascent, uh, on the fourth Sunday. Uh, and early in the church, uh, this was actually uh, the Sunday of the parable of the Good Samaritan. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so, But on this day, we remember St. John Climacus, abbot of Sinai in the sixth and seventh century, who is assigned a special Sunday in Lent because by virtue of his writings and his own life, he forms a pattern of the true Christian ascetic. St. John is the author of the Ladder of Paradise, one of the spiritual texts appointed to be read in church during Lent. The first canon at Matins on this Sunday is based on the parable of the Good Samaritan, which harkens back to that this used to be the Sunday of the, the Good Samaritan. Uh, the repentant Christian is likened to the man who fell among thieves. Uh, and we hear today in the gospel, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed after three days, he will rise again, uh, from Mark chapter 9. Uh, and the emphasis shifts now from us, from our repentance and effort, to the events which took place for our sake and for our salvation. Uh, so it's very noteworthy on this day that a real shift takes place as the, the gospel uh, concludes today after Christ had healed a young man uh, who the disciples were not able to heal, uh, that he makes this announcement to uh, the disciples. And, and again, it's a shift for us in the fast itself. Uh, I want to read to you from uh, the blessed Theophylact, uh, who comments about when Christ says that the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men and they will kill him and after he is killed, he will rise on the third day. Uh, he, uh, Bless Theophylact writes about this to say, Whenever the Lord spoke of his passion on the cross, he would precede and follow his words with miracles, so that no one could think that he would suffer because he was powerless. So he tells this to the disciples immediately after healing that young child. Uh, and when he spoke sad words such as they shall kill him, he would add words of joy. He shall rise the third day, teaching us that gladness always follows after grief and that we should not anguish needlessly in our sorrows, but should hope for better things. So this is a good way to think of when in our lives uh, bad things happen, that there is hope uh, that things will get better as well. I, I will do a little bit different today as I mentioned, historically, this was the, the Sunday of the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, and uh, so instead of reading a homily from St. Nikolai today, what I'm going to read is all of the texts uh, from the Matins canon uh, that refer to uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, and that really helps us to see how the church has interpreted that parable uh, throughout history itself. Uh, and uh, so uh, this is uh, from the Matins canon for this Sunday. Uh, and so the first text reads, O Christ, my Savior, I have become like the man who fell among thieves, who was wounded and left half dead. For through my sins, I have wounds more grievous than his. And so right away we see that the church is replacing us uh, with the man who has been beaten up and left on the side of the road. Uh, and that, that is, that's me, that's you. Uh, and then we'll continue with all these texts then. So, stripped of all thy wealth, he cried out lamenting, O Savior, I am gravely wounded. Leave me not to the thieves. So do I also pray to thee, merciful Lord, O save me. Uh, then, journeying on the path of life, O Christ, I have been sorely wounded by thieves because of my passions. I pray thee, raise me up. Thieves have robbed my mind and left me half dead, wounded by my sins, but heal me, O Lord. My passions have stripped me bare of thy commandments, O Savior Christ, and I have been scourged by sensual pleasures, but pour oil upon my wounds. Thieves have despoiled me of my godly actions, leaving me chastised and in agony. My unstable thoughts have stripped me bare of thy commandments, O Savior, and I have been scourged by my transgressions. The Levite, when he saw me wounded, passed by on the other side. O Savior, but do thou preserve me. Bind up, O Jesus, the wounds of my soul, 
as the Samaritan bound up the wounds of him that fell among thieves, and heal me from my pain, I pray, O Christ. Scourged by my transgressions, O Christ, my soul is sick and in agony, and I lie naked and bereft of the divine virtues, but I beseech thee, save me. When the priest and the Levite saw me, they could not help me, but passed by on the other side. But thou in thy compassion hast given me salvation and preserved me. Scourging my mind with the passions, thieves have seized my wealth and left me as one dead. But take pity on me and save me, O Lord. When the Levite saw how painfully I had been scourged, unable to endure the sight of my wounds, he passed by on the other side. But thou in thy love hast poured upon me thy rich mercy. Thieves fell upon me, poor wretch, and scourging me they left me a lifeless corpse. Therefore I pray to thee, come to my aid. My ever-moving thoughts have robbed my mind, and striking me through the passions, they have left me dead because of the multitude of my transgressions. But, O Savior, heal me. When the Levite saw me injured and in pain, thinking my wounds incurable and unable to endure the sight of them, he passed by on the other side. But, O my Savior, do thou make me whole. Robbed by my thoughts and scourged by my transgressions, O Savior, I have ruined my life, and I have been stripped of thy divine image. O God, who lovest mankind, but take pity on me. Thou hast come down upon the earth from on high, O Savior, taking pity on me when I was wounded in every part by the scourgings of sin. And in thy compassion, O Christ, thou hast poured upon me the oil of thy mercy. Yielding by my own free choice to the passions of sensual pleasure, I have not kept thy commandments, O Master. I have been stripped of grace, and I lie wounded and naked. Therefore I pray to thee, O Savior, save me. The Levite could not cleanse my wounds, but thou hast come to me in thy compassion, O loving Savior, and poured upon me the oil of thy mercies, and as the best of all physicians thou hast healed me. Since thou art compassionate, thou hast taken pity on me and saved me, O Christ my Savior, when I had been painfully scourged by the thieves, and instead of the two, piece, two silver pieces, Thou hast given thy soul and body as a ransom for me. Uh, and so those are the texts from the Matins Canon that, that, that pertain to the parable of the Good Samaritan. So again, we hear that we are the ones lying on the side of the road, and who is it that heals us? Uh, it's Christ who comes and heals us. Uh, it's a wonderful connection to make uh, with the gospel that we heard today from Mark's gospel about how when Christ went to heal that young child, uh, that as the spirits came out of the child, uh, the people thought the child was dead. Uh, he was lying there lifeless, uh, similar to uh, how the, 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 the man on the road has been beaten up and left lifeless along the road. Uh, in the gospel today, Christ grabbed the child by the arm and lifted him up uh, and brought him to life. Uh, this is what happens to us as we lie along the road, uh, dead in sin, uh, beat up, uh, as, as the, many of the texts say, scourged. Uh, and it's Christ who is there to pick us up, to heal our wounds, to put oil on those wounds. Uh, that, that it's, it's a, a healing salve that he's able, able to put on us uh, and ultimately to pick us up to life. Uh, so again, I thought on this day it was good for us to really reflect on uh, the, the idea of the Good Samaritan and how we look at that in terms of the church. And again, it bring, brings us great joy as we read that, that there is one who will heal us, not the Levite and the priest who walked by on the other side left him there, uh, but that Christ is indeed the Good Samaritan. Glory to Jesus Christ.